Ever wondered what it would be like if all the continents were one? Welcome to the world of Pangaea. Picture the Earth, not as the familiar globe dotted with seven vast continents, but as a singular, immense landmass. This landmass, stretching from pole to pole, was our planet's face some 300 million years ago. It was a time when the world was one, a time of Pangaea. The term Pangaea might sound exotic, but its meaning is quite simple. It comes from the ancient Greek words Pan, meaning all, and Gaia, meaning Earth. So, Pangaea is all Earth, or whole Earth, an apt description of this supercontinent that once dominated our planet's surface. Pangaea was a colossal landmass, a supercontinent that existed during the late Paleozoic and early Mesozoic eras. It assembled from earlier continental units approximately 300 million years ago, and it began to break apart about 175 million years ago. In its prime, Pangaea encompassed an area of about 128 million square kilometers, which is nearly twice the size of modern-day Asia, the largest continent on Earth today. But Pangaea was more than just a supersized continent. It was a world that defied our current understanding of geography and climate. Imagine vast, sprawling deserts, wide expanses of shallow seas teeming with life, and mountain ranges that made the Himalayas seem like mere foothills. This was a world where evolution took strange and fascinating turns, where the seeds of our present-day biodiversity were sown. However, Pangaea's reign was not to last. The same forces that had brought it together would eventually tear it apart, setting the stage for the world as we know it today. Imagine the world as one large landmass, no continents to divide us. That was Pangaea. So, how did this massive landmass come into existence? Let's dive into the birth of Pangaea, a process that began over 300 million years ago. The story of Pangaea's formation is a story of Earth's tectonic plates, those massive slabs of rock that float on the semi-fluid layer of the Earth's mantle. Picture the Earth as a giant jigsaw puzzle with its continents as pieces that are constantly moving and changing their positions. Now let's rewind time to the late Paleozoic era. Around this time, the world's continents, which had been scattered across the globe, began to slowly inch towards each other. This movement wasn't random, but was driven by the incredible force of tectonic activity beneath the Earth's surface. What caused this shift? The answer lies in a theory proposed by German scientist Alfred Wegener in the early 20th century, the theory of continental drift. According to Wegener, the continents we see today were once part of a single gigantic landmass, which he named Pangaea, derived from the ancient Greek for all lands. As the tectonic plates beneath the Earth's surface moved, they pushed and pulled the continents along with them. Over millions of years, these movements brought the scattered landmasses together to form the supercontinent Pangaea. Picture a slow, relentless dance of the continents, drawn towards each other by the inexorable force of plate tectonics. And yet, the birth of Pangaea was not a peaceful event. As the continents collided, they caused massive upheaval, creating towering mountain ranges and deep ocean trenches. The Appalachian Mountains in North America, for instance, are a direct result of this tectonic tumult. The birth of Pangaea was more than just the creation of a supercontinent. It was a testament to the immense power of Earth's geological forces, capable of reshaping the planet over millions of years. It's a stark reminder that our world is in a constant state of flux, ever-changing and evolving. And so, we arrive at the conclusion, the birth of Pangaea was a process of colossal geological forces at work. A fascinating spectacle of Earth's dynamic nature forever reshaping and redefining itself. But what was life like on this supercontinent? Imagine a world where one enormous landmass is surrounded by an endless ocean, a land where the climate ranges from scorching deserts to icy tundras, and where the biodiversity is beyond anything we can fathom today. Welcome to Pangaea, home to an array of life as diverse and unique as any we know today. The heart of Pangaea was dominated by vast deserts, much like the Sahara today. These harsh, arid regions were home to creatures that thrived in such conditions. Amidst the sandy dunes, a variety of reptiles, including the ancestors of dinosaurs, adapted to survive in these extreme environments. Contrastingly, 
the coastal regions of Pangaea were lush and fertile, teeming with life. These verdant areas were home to a variety of plant species, providing a rich food source for an assortment of herbivorous creatures. From towering ferns to massive horsetails, the vegetation was diverse and robust, offering a vibrant green contrast to the desert's golden hues. The animal kingdom during the Pangaean era was equally fascinating. The land was dominated by amphibians and early reptiles, paving the way for the reign of the dinosaurs. These creatures evolved to fit every ecological niche, from towering herbivores that grazed on the high canopies of the forests, to agile predators that stalked the undergrowth. The climatic conditions of Pangaea were equally diverse. The interior was subjected to extreme temperatures and seasonal droughts due to its distance from the moderating influence of the ocean. Meanwhile, the coastal regions experienced milder climates, with abundant rainfall supporting the lush vegetation. In the vast ocean surrounding Pangaea, marine life flourished. From the microscopic plankton to the gigantic ichthyosaurs, the sea teemed with a diverse array of life forms, each playing its part in the intricate web of life. Life on Pangaea was as diverse and vibrant as it is today, just a little different. Like a time capsule, Pangaea offers us a glimpse into a bygone era, a testament to life's incredible ability to adapt and thrive, no matter the circumstances. We don't live on Pangaea today, so what happened to this supercontinent? The mighty Pangaea, though once a symbol of unity, was not to endure forever. The same forces that brought it together would inevitably pull it apart. And so, our story takes a dramatic turn. About 200 million years ago, Pangaea began a slow, arduous process of fragmentation. But why? Why did this monolithic landmass break apart? The answer lies beneath the Earth's surface in the restless engine of our planet's geology. Deep within the Earth, the lithosphere, our planet's solid outer shell, floats on a semi-fluid layer called the asthenosphere. This is where the action happens. The lithosphere is broken into a jigsaw puzzle of pieces called tectonic plates. These plates constantly move, albeit at a pace slower than the growth of your fingernails, driven by the heat in the Earth's core. Now, recall that Pangaea was essentially one massive tectonic plate, surrounded by a global ocean, Panthalassa. But the heat from the Earth's core generated convection currents within the asthenosphere. These currents exerted tremendous pressure on the lithosphere, causing it to crack and fracture. These fractures marked the birth of new tectonic plates, and the initiation of the breakup of Pangaea. As these new plates moved apart, they created gaps, which were filled by molten rock from below, forming new crust. This process, known as seafloor spreading, gave birth to new oceans and seas. Over millions of years, these tectonic movements fragmented Pangaea into the continents that we know today. The drifting continents shaped our planet's geography, climate, and biology, setting the stage for the evolution of diverse ecosystems and the rise of human civilization. Pangaea didn't last forever, but its breakup led to the world as we know it. The story of Pangaea's breakup is a tale of geological forces at work, a testament to our planet's dynamic nature, and a reminder of the ever-changing tapestry of our Earth's history. From one came many, and in that division, the world found its current form. What remains of Pangaea today? A thought-provoking question indeed. While Pangaea, the supercontinent that once held all landmasses together, may be a relic of the distant past. Its echoes are still very much alive in our present world. The remnants of Pangaea are everywhere. They're in the jagged coastlines that fit together like puzzle pieces, in the fossil records that show the same species existing on continents thousands of miles apart, and in the similar rock formations found on separate landmasses. These are all silent witnesses to the time when our world was one, a single entity, an ancient supercontinent that we now know as Pangaea. But the legacy of Pangaea is not merely confined to the physical realm. Its disintegration played a crucial role in the evolution and distribution of species. As Pangaea split, so did the habitats of various species. This geographical isolation resulted in the divergence of species, leading to the rich biodiversity we see on Earth today. From the kangaroos of Australia to the polar bears of the Arctic, every creature tells a tale of Pangaea's influence. Moreover, the breakup of Pangaea shaped the world as we know it. 
The continents as we see them today are essentially the scattered fragments of Pangaea. The drifting and colliding of these fragments led to the formation of mountain ranges, valleys, and other geographical features. The way we travel, the climates we experience, the very maps we use to navigate our world, all these are shaped by the breakup of Pangaea. So while Pangaea may be a chapter from the Earth's ancient past, its legacy continues to influence our lives. From the landscapes we traverse to the myriad species we share our planet with, the fingerprints of Pangaea are everywhere. They remind us of a time when our world was a different place, a time when all land was one. Pangaea may be long gone, but it left a legacy that's etched in the very fabric of our planet. So what's the future of our continents? Based on current tectonic plate movements, our continents are slowly but surely shifting. Some scientists predict that in about 250 million years, we may witness the emergence of Pangaea Proxima, a new supercontinent. Just imagine, a world where all land masses are once again united, echoing the ancient past of Pangaea. A fascinating concept, isn't it? Who knows? Maybe one day we'll see a new supercontinent in the making, Pangaea. A mythical land of unity, a testament to the ever-changing nature of our planet. We've traversed its birth, the vibrant life it supported, its inevitable breakup, and the lasting legacy it left behind. We've also peeked into the future, speculating on the shape of continents yet to come. The story of Pangaea is a fascinating journey through time, reminding us that our world is a dynamic, ever-changing sphere of wonder.